I tell you, it, it's been it's been crazy, Ron. You know, with the ninety percent flying out the door, we just can't keep it in. Um. Intriguing and interesting gold and silver stories from the coin shop. We hear all types of news about the COMEX and the LBMA. We hear news from the big online bullion dealers. But what about what's happening right now at the local coin shop level? Who better to talk to than the guru himself, Coin Shop Chris? He's in the trenches every single day. He always has interesting stories for us. This guy knows more about coins. He knows a lot more, even about 90% constitutional junk silver. I like to call him the Fred Sanford of junk silver. Coin Shop Chris, welcome to Ron's basement. Well, thank you, Ron. Thank you for having me on again. Well, you're, you're all... But you're a good man, Ron. Everybody needs to like, share, and subscribe to Ron's basement, please. Yeah, that's right. Thank you, Chris. So what's going on? What's been happening at the local coin shop? I understand there's been some interesting things that have happened over the last couple of weeks. Any anything oh. you can share with us? Oh, I tell you, it, it's been it's been crazy, Ron. You know, with the ninety percent flying out the door, we just can't keep it in. Um, you know, we our owner has gone to a different state this past week to um, find more ninety percent silver. He was happy, really ha happy to find some more, and not a lot. But um, he likes to get out, you know, and you know, he's 87 years old, Ron, and wow. he, he just likes to um, drive around and, and talk to the other coin shop owners. And, you know, that's what's, you know, that's what makes the fun out of it. Yeah, we're not making a lot of money, but, you know, he, he but he really don't care about that. You know, he's just trying to keep the customers happy. And there's a lot more, Ron. I mean, I got some stories if you don't want me to well, go yeah, on. Yeah. No, I want to hear stories, but I want to, since we're on the subject of 90 percent, what I'm hearing is that a lot of the 90 percent silver, like. I don't want to say there's a shortage, but there's definitely stress in that market and that a lot of it is being absorbed at the local coin shop level. Like if local coin shops get 90% silver, they're holding on to it because they know they can sell it. So a lot of the big wholesalers uh, are having a harder time, especially because the local coin shops aren't wanting to sell their 90% to the wholesalers. Is that is that accurate in your opinion? That's right. We, you know, very rarely run. Like remember, probably just before the um panda pandemic, that we actually sold a few bags back to the Bowen dealer because we had so much of it. But now everybody seems to want it. You know, just a few years ago, Ron, even you know, you know, 2015, 2017 ish, nobody wanted the stuff. Nobody wanted it. I mean, everybody just kept calling it. Nah, I don't want it. It's junk. It's junk. Well, you know, junk silver has gone up in price. And the value of a silver quarter last time I looked was about five forty three Ron. You know, maybe a little bit cheaper than than that. Silver dime was ravaging right around two oh nine a dime. And a half dollar was melting for way over ten to ten bucks. Mm -hmm. So I mean that's just your melt value. And I, I gotta give a warning, Ron. You, you know, I, you, you know, shop around for your best price. And you, you know, that that's my best advice around, you know, when I look on eBay. And um, really, people are starting to way overcharge for this stuff. So buyer beware if you're shopping around and really stay off of Etsy. Um, I got some stories about Etsy. If we want to go on to that, too, later in the video, Ron. But um, really, we got to shop around. And Pinback's your sponsor, Ron. They really have good places on a lot of their items. So I want to give a shout out to your sponsor, Pim, this Pinback's. There, there's Pimbex right there for everybody to see. P I M B E X, Pimbex.com. They're an online bullion dealer. They always have great prices. They always have great selection. And they're always a company that you can trust. Thanks for bringing that up, Chris. Uh, let me ask You're you a welcome. question. Let me ask you a question, Chris. I got two questions about 90% silver. Uh, number one, I'll ask you this one first. How does it make you feel, Chris, when people call it junk? I know you've been a, I mean, you've loved this stuff since I've known you, but does that hurt your feelings when people call it junk? Not one bit. You know, it don't, that term don't bother me one bit because, you know, 90% silver, junk silver, constitution silver, whatever you want to call it, it don't, it's all the same thing. Yeah. Really, yeah, the, the junk term really offends some people out, just out there. 
And it's, I don't know why people get offended about that because, you know, it's still, it's not, it's not three nines fine. You know, it's, it's in our, it was in our money before 64 and before Ron. Yeah. And then Nixon took us off the gold standard. And, you know, and that was all part of the plan. We, but we all know that, you know, that's the, and silver started to get more expensive. You know, the average person, Ron, does not understand, you know, maybe your viewers do, my viewers do, Ron, but the average American does not understand this is worth more than a quarter. This is worth right. more than a quarter because it's got the silver content in the quarter and the silver dimes. You know, now that's people, <laughs> that's a great point, Chris. The average American probably doesn't realize that a 1958 quarter is worth more than a quarter. I bet I'd be curious. I bet it's almost 90 percent of people, ironically, don't realize that it's that it's worth. How much is a 19 just a standard 1958 or any year uh, silver quarter worth? The last time I checked was right. The milk value was right around 525 or so. I mean, I mean, it wow. goes as of course it goes up and down. The silver dime is melting for about two bucks, about 210. And a silver half dollar is melting for about 10, 25 or so. Give, give or take whatever the price is at the certain time that we that we look at. If you want to bring up NGC, I don't think we can screen share this. But um, you know, coin melt melt value will bring it right up for you. Yeah, so, I mean, yeah, yeah. Do you think it's a canary in the coal mine? I meaning, do you think that this stress, and I think some people could say shortage, but we'll say stress in the night. I'm gonna say shortage. Shortage. Okay. I'm right, we'll say it. Let's just say it, Chris. There's a shortage. Do you think it's a canary in the coal mine for what's to come for the rest of the silver market? Because we know that during some of the more recent previously previous stress periods or shortages that we had uh, in the silver market that 90% silver uh, was amongst the highest uh, in terms of premiums shooting up. Do you, do you, do you think maybe this is kind of a, a sign of things to come, Chris? Well, it's always happening around me, but we got a email from our Bowen dealer. What was it? Today's Friday. We got Wednesday saying five ounce silver bars and 10 ounce silver bars are going up. Um, yeah. Up, you know, up um, two dollars for um, five ounce and four dollars for a ten ounce silver bar. So we didn't really need a lot of five ounce bars. We really didn't need the ten ounce silver bars. But come to find out, the Bolandale only had ten ounce Canadian maples left. Mm -hmm. No, the Canadian Royal Mint one. So we so we ordered three cases, which is a hundred and fifty silver ten ounce bars, and the only going to keep them ourselves because we our safes are so full right now at the shop. It's just unreal. So, I mean, they're going up. Yeah, they've already gone up. So we had to raise our premiums on what we had in stock already. Yeah, it's a sign what's coming, Ron. Um, one ounce stuff didn't seem to go up this week. Um, anything else, but the five ounce silver bars and the um, 10 ounce silver bars, the premiums have gone up for us. They're moving. They're, are you seeing yeah. anyone come in and make big, I mean, any stories of what happened in the last couple of weeks in terms of people coming in and making big purchases at all? Well, there was not a, um, there was a big, um, I want to call it an over big purchase, but I had a wife and a husband came in yesterday and they bought, you know, they were been watching YouTube. They've been watching Lynette Zane. They've been watching um, Andy Sheckman and there was a few other names out there. Not either, not you or me, Ron, but you know, but that's, that's fine. <laughs> Thanks um, for the plug. I appreciate the plug, Chris. <laughs> yeah, you know, I mean, it, but it is what it is there, but um, you know, they're starting, newer people are starting to get into it. And they come in and say, what do you, what do you recommend? Well, we really can't, we're not financial advisors, Ron, but you know, we are really going on with the 90% silver. So what this, what this couple did, $2,500 worth of dimes and $2,500 worth of silver quarters. Wow. That's what they bought. Wow. Not wow. face, but just valued dollars, you know? Yeah. And you, you, you had know? a guy come in and sell some silver, I think maybe some 90%, not too long ago. But it was because he wanted to go on a big trip or something like that. Is that? Is yeah, that his wife, his his wife passed away, uh -huh. and this guy had cancer, and their plans were always to go to state of Hawaii, and the wife never made it there, Ron. Hmm. So, and this guy's getting up in an age, and he's he, he's got a nurse, a full, full time nurse that they actually live with him, and she's she's the nurse, and and her, her husband lives with with him or the boy, this boyfriend, I should say. And, um, but she's, he's willing to pay for her to go and he was willing to pay for him to go, but he can't go cause he, he's, he works. So she's going to go with him. And in November, 
they have booked the flight and they're going to go see Hawaii before he passes on. So that and was so his that's, reason for selling some silver. That was his reason for selling some silver. Yeah. 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 You what are, what else are you seeing in the, in the shop that's uh, of interest? Well, I tell you these, the grandma, there's two grandma stories here. I'll tell you about the twin boys first. They're about your, but, but I think your dolls are 12, right? Yes. Okay. So these, these two boys, um, the grandma comes in, she buys junk silver, 90% silver um on a monthly basis and what they when the boys come over for a visit every single week they normally get to together for sunday night supper and they but they do chores so the, what the grandmother does she gives them cash and puts it in a jar and when they have enough to buy a silver dime or silver cord and she looks up no b- b- value not no creams on top of it the boys are allowed to buy what they earn that day and there's not enough cash to do it. So they're trying to fill up a pasta jar, j- jar sauce of silver, dimes, quarters, and halves. And the boys are like on wars trying to find out who's going to fill up their jar faster on. I mean, it's it's a great way to teach the, the young people to start learning how to save in silver and gold, really. But they're starting off with the boys with the smaller stuff. I mean, that's just... You know, that's really, and the boys are allowed, if they want to sell it back, the grandma has a little cash drawer. She will let them sell it back at spot, at, at melt that value back to her. And if they want to go buy a candy bar or whatever the case may be, that is where they actually, that's where they get their money back. So if they buy it for like five bucks, you know, and then it goes up to five fifty, and the boys want to sell it back. That's what, that's what happens, Ron. Okay. What about this video? I'm on your, uh, you, I didn't realize you have your own YouTube channel, Coin Shop Chris. Oh, yes, you did. Um, let's take a look up here. Coin Shop Chris, everybody. That's real easy. Just type that in and you'll come here and then you press s- subscribe. Like, yeah, see, and then turn on the bell notification. But I want to ask you about some of these titles. $62,000 of silver sold. But what, what, what was up with that? That was that was a good day for us. That was a good day for the shop. That everybody was Monday. It was Tuesday, I believe it was. Uh-huh. That everybody came running in and buying silver after Labor Day, and um, they're afraid people are getting more and more afraid out there on. And that's not that's one of our better days. I mean, you know, normally our days is between twenty and probably thirty two thousand dollars a day at the shop. Yeah, that's a normal day for us. But that was you know. Another line day, first thing in the morning, and people just starting to be a little bit more panicky, I guess. And what's coming down the pipeline, nobody knows, Ron. That's the thing. Nobody knows what's going to happen with the Fed. Nobody's going to know what's going to happen with the BRICS. Nobody knows what's going to happen with the election in no this November. And I tell you, it's like a one, two, three strike punch here. And I think silver and gold are going up. And gold seems to be holding right now, Ron, at its price. Mm-hmm. And that's very, very good news, I think. Yeah, gold, the last I checked, still, I mean, I, I get emails from people saying, oh, gold's not going up. Go, I'm like, gold's at $2,500 per ounce. Think, Look back right. to where it was one year ago and then adjust your thinking, right? I mean, let's be happy if gold stays above 2300 and builds a strong base from here. Uh, what about this one? 90% silver. New people are getting ready. You just released that three hours ago. Are you are you yes. able to talk about it yet? Or do you, have, you want to let it? Oh, uh, oh yeah. The, um, that one, actually, I'll, I'll say it, Ron. Don't matter. Um, that was the one I released on about the um, husband and the wife came in. Okay. And buying yeah. that 2,500, you know, it added up to 5,000. Yeah. yeah. What, what about this one over here? Stacking five ounce silver bars. Oh, you're gonna make fun of how my accent. That's fine. Well, um, you're, yeah, yeah. You're, well, yeah. So everybody knows Coin Shop Chris has a Southern Missouri Ozark accent, correct? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, five ounce, ten ounce bars. I do, I do like them a lot. You know, I, I rather have the ten ounce, of course, but you know, I like, you know, all types of silver run, and you know, I think I know it's. <laughs> I just don't stack anything bigger than a kilo because, you know, I think a kilo, you know, by the time you get to that size and if you get into a, a situation where we need to bother and trade, that's a lot of silver to bother and trade with. Yeah. I mean, yeah. so, I mean, I think 10 ounces, from my max, you know, I mean, that's not financial advice to anybody out there on, right, you know, right. to your viewers or my viewers, it's this way I'm looking at silver this right, this right, this right now. Yeah. 
Yeah, very interesting. So again, everybody, this is the Coin Shop Chris YouTube channel. Just go to the YouTube search bar, type in Coin Shop Chris, subscribe, and uh, he's got some great content out there. Yeah, it's interesting developments, Chris, that we're seeing. Um, anything else you want to bring up for our viewer? Oh, yes. Um, tell you another story. There was a lady that called, not called us, but she emailed the shop on Labor Day, Ron. And she was an older lady. And she has two twin, not two, two twin daughters. Two, she has two granddaughters, I should say. One's 25 and one's 32. And she wanted to go to bingo so bad on Monday night. And we were closed. So I said, I'll come down and I'll write you a ticket up for the $5 silver dime so she can get her money. And she wanted only wanted 60 bucks, Ron. I says, no, ma'am. I said, I can't write a ticket up for 60 bucks. I says, I'm not going to do that to you. <laughs> I says, I says, I want to write the ticket up for 105 bucks. And she said, that's what we're paying for one roll of dimes right now. She says, no, that's too much. I said, well, I says, I'll tell you what. I said, I'll write up for 100 bucks, but that's the lowest I'm going to go. Yeah. Well, she was happy with that. She went to bingo run and she won 600 bucks. She wow. comes back in. And when I first gave her the money, she said, can I give you a hug, Chris? I said, sure. You can give me a hug. Is so her she gave me a hug. <laughs> uh, I'm going to leave that one alone. Um, so, uh, <laughs> whoa. Thanks, Ron. <laughs> so she gave you a hug? So she, so she gave me a hug, Ron, and she went to bingo, yeah. and she comes back the next morning to pay off the dimes, and she says, "I won six hundred bucks in dimes. I mean, in in bingo money, you know, cash." Yeah. You know, now I'm getting all confused with that with with that comment there, Ron. <laughs> but just all right. Um, she was um very happy. So she bought three more rolls of dimes, and what she's doing is, the last five or six years for her granddaughter, she's giving them. $100 in face value of junk silver every single year. And guess what? The two granddaughters also stack, which oh, wow. is awesome to see. So you're, you you're, know, the, is, you're, the, you're the bingo savior, Chris. That's a, that's a heartwarming story. I was waiting for you to tell me she gave you like a hundred bucks, but all she gave you was a hug. Sounds like she gave me a hug. That was worth that, more than a you know, hundred bucks. It, run. You know what it is? I'll tell a real quick story. There, or, or I have a little job at night, and these little kids come in, and there was a little four-year-old boy who just came to the United States from uh, South Korea. This was like a year and a half ago, and he couldn't speak any English. And he came into my office, and he looked at me, and uh, this is the second time that he'd come to the school, little school where I work at. And the, and he looked at me, and he put his arms out like this, and then gave me a hug. And I swear it was like the most one of the most besides my own kids. One of the most heartwarming things that ever happened to me. Uh, it's hugs are good, Chris. Well, he but he got confused, Ron, because he thought you were Santa Claus. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, buddy. Well, well, go go. You got more stories? Or are we good? To I just go? got one more thing. I actually had a comment on one of my videos. This feels, this feels like when I'm on the phone with you, you always do that. I got one more thing. I got one more thing. Go I got ahead. one more thing, Ron. I got you know the, the comment read. You know, there's a homeless guy in this area. And with the with this viewer that I had, and he collects cans and bottles. And what he does with that money, he goes into their local coin shop and buys ninety percent silver. So the point to this story is, if it's okay to go into a local coin shop and buy a couple silver dimes, a couple silver coins, if that's all you can afford to do, do so. I mean, that is the major point right there. I mean, if this guy can do it and he don't have a home. And I don't know the guy's back the the background the the pe the person who left the comment didn't give me too much more information than that. But I thought that was a pretty good story there that a homeless guy is stacking ninety percent silver, and he's probably don't have a lot of income to begin with. Yeah, yeah, that means you can do it too. Well, hey, we appreciate uh, your update of what's going on on the street. We're going to have you on on a real. You're already on the channel on a regular basis, but. We'll continue this because I think it's important. You know, I think that that we get so much news like from Kitco, which is great. And, you know, the big news sources about what's going on with the COMEX and the LBMA and China and India and all this stuff. And we even get news about the big bullion dealers. But to get it straight from you, like you're a guy, you're in the trenches every day 
uh, working and kind of seeing what the average American is dealing with and, and, and how they're interacting with the silver and gold market. Um, yeah, so we really appreciate your insights, Chris. I'm going to encourage everyone again to go to Chris's YouTube channel, coinshopchris.com. Like, share, subscribe, please, with my channel as well. Chris, any parting words you have for our guest today? No, I just like like to thank you again to all your viewers, Ron, for coming over from your channel. I really appreciate that. Um, you are the best, Ron. I mean, you speak the truth about silver and gold. Um, there's not too many honest people out there like you and me doing this. And it's not easy, Ron. And I give you a lot of credit because you can go an hour long, long live stream. And I don't know how you do it, Ron, because I'm just about fucked at about 15, 20 minutes. So, I mean, <laughs> well, I thank you, be, Ron. I think I'm permanently cooked. That might be the yeah. answer. So, all right, buddy. <laughs> thank you. Okay. And thanks, thank you, Ron. To our, thanks to our viewer, right? There's me and you, and there's that third very Absolutely. person, the viewer. Thank you for spending this time with us here in the basement. And uh, Coin Shop Chris and I will be back again soon. We'll be back soon, yes. Fortuna Mining is a global intermediate gold and silver producer. Since 2005, Fortuna's best-in-class management has delivered impressive growth and profits. Fortuna's solid financial position and operational expertise allows for performance in any precious metals price cycle, but also provides a foundation from which to harvest robust profits in more favorable metals markets. Investing in Fortuna is an investment in quality, long-term, sustainable production of in-demand precious and base metals. First Mining Gold is a development company advancing two of the largest gold projects in Canada, Spring Pole in Ontario and Du Parquet, located in Quebec. Each already has 5 million ounces of gold reserves, but exploration initiatives are underway at both projects to find even more gold. First Mining is well financed, has zero debt, and owns an interest in four additional Canadian gold development projects.